weeks ago, a man by the name of Owen Thomas Phillips, which he goes by Depo Suipilzin, Iron Jacket, Pobit Quasho, that dude was exposed as a fraud and with very serious accusations as well. After all that, the man decided to deactivate his account and then weeks later he reactivated it and then he came out with this half-ass sorry excuse for a response video. I didn't like the response video and to be honest, to be really and brutally honest, uh, it was a really weak response. It was a cluster of gaslighting, narcissistic behavior, contradictions, childish behavior, and more and more false statements. So as a result, this is why I'm here. This is my final response video, and this is all the information that I'm willing to put out. Uh, Owen has now disappeared. It's been almost a month already. It's been more than a month, actually, since he made that little response video, and uh, he's gone. Maybe he deleted his Instagram instead of deactivating it this time. It's it's best he, he he he'll do it that way because things are about to get really bad for him. All I ask for you guys is just just uh, keep an open mind and just listen to the things I'm gonna say. You know. So in the beginning of the video, he wants to try to make himself look like an actual indigenous person, right? Was well, one of us by trying to speak some kind of dialect. So. If you want to learn more about that, you can go ahead and watch Dushpan uh, Nawat. Uh, he is a fluent speaker of Nawat, and he goes ahead and he dissects, you know, every bit and part of the language, you know, aspect of this video, and he tries to keep it focused on Nawat. But in his video, it's 30 minutes long. But basically, he says that yes. Man, I could tell you pretty much every single sentence he said was grammatically incorrect. But I will say this. He learned a lot of words. And even if he pronounced them incorrectly, if he conjugated them incorrectly, he learned a lot of words. And that should be like a challenge for the rest of us. You know, most of the things mistakes is he's made or in a, trying to construct Nahuatl in a similar fashion as he was speaking English. Most of the mistakes he's made are mistakes that first uh, that language learners make, English speaking language learners make. And you're going to see the main thing is, and we're not going to go with the pronunciation. We're not going to talk about that because we know it's a second language to, to him, even if he claims he learned it from his relatives and this is what i've heard from other now speakers too is that uh when he made his little choloani video with prayers um when he was talking over the fire he spoke nothing but gibberish so if you want go ahead and check out you know uh Tushpan. i'll have his profile right there so you can look it up on youtube and stuff so he's a really great guy appreciate it man you know if he wants to collab you know i'm open for that but then after that, you know, he tries to kind of make himself look like a really big victim, you know, saying that he, his health, his health enab enabled him not to respond or say anything, right? Huh. And he basically, instead of addressing the situation, he decided to dox two women and try to make them look desperate. And all honesty, man, this is what makes it really childish. It's just something that a high schooler would do some petty high schooler middle schooler would do it's a very low blow for someone who is a self-proclaimed shaman and who was raised in indigenous values and you know this is not something you would do this is definitely not you know something you would definitely not do for me as an example dude i actually reached out to this guy i reached out to him three times the third time was actually when he blocked me and that was about about a year ago and a year later is when all this stuff came out and he blocked me for no reason i wasn't even aggressive i just went ahead and i asked him about his sources and where is he getting his information from because i was curious to know and what, what what's a red flag mainly is that this guy he responds to women so that should have already been a red flag from the beginning so why does he only respond to women and not a actual indigenous man he can he not have that is his masculinity so fragile or what's going on but my biological mother a mixed woman of chichimeja descent who grew up in El Sereno, gave me up at a young age while living in Bull Heights. And because of this, I grew up in several different places and living as a runaway 
most of my childhood. Spending most of my childhood homeless and on the run with other runaways, squatters, crust punks, and fugitives in Boyle Heights. Squatting under the 6th Street Bridge or between East 6th Street and Hollenbeck Park in Los Angeles County. And when the state would find me being sent back to Tampa, Florida, as soon as I was taken back to Florida, I ran away and was once again living on the run in various squat houses, including the infamous Hoople Mansion, with other runaways, crust punks, squatters, and fugitives in Fort Myers, Florida, in Lee County, as well as three years living on the land. And he never said anything along the lines where he was a cholo. And that strikes a red flag, and that's where his lie is inconsistent. He has all these tattoos of, you know, being a sureño, and these prison tattoos where you have to earn for you know, doing these deeds and stuff like that. And he never mentioned any of that. He said he ran away with cross punks and, you know, a bunch of outcasts. So he's not a cholo. He's a rocker foo. A rocker foo who was crazy enough to tattoo these gang related tattoos and say he's a cholo and say he has a right to speak on, on, the, on these things, you know. So that's another red flag. That's another lie. If... I were one trying to respond to all this, I would definitely have included my background of a cholo. He never mentioned anything about him being a cholo. He never said anything about no banda, no gang, no barrio. He always said he Before he was exposed, life. Owens would always say that he did 10 years in, in prison, 10 years in Sam's prison. So let's, let's break that down real fast. All right, homie, let's break this down. You are about 32 years old, so you're about 32 years old, and you said your mommy gave you up at a young age for, I don't know, maybe a bolsitas cante, right? Whatever reason, I don't judge. But then there's this picture of you. I say you're more like seven years old. So fuck it, seven years old right there. You were in a happy family with your family or whatever. And then in this comment, you stated that you went to jail at 13. How does that work? So trece right there. So 13 right there, magic number. Then in this video, your response video noted that you spent three years at your grandmother's ranch in Texas. Here you put you at the age of 17, so so 17. And you say you went there for three years, so so you're 20, right? Then you got arrested in Florida at 21 in 2010. And then recently, you said you've been living off the land for about seven years. So I've been living off, off grid and traditionally for close to eight years now. Right. So then that puts you at 25. So you stated that you went to jail for about 10 years, right? And you said you went to jail at the age of 13. You spent most of your childhood giving away. You were at the land for three years and you've been living off the land for seven years. So... Where did you go to prison for 10 years? When did you go to Sam's prison? So where does 10 years fit right here in your resume that you went to Sam's prison for 10 years and that's why nobody knows about you? You're a fucking liar. The only time where you went to jail was at 21 and 2010 and you went to jail for a day and you were out on bail, bro. Is that why you ran away? You never went to jail at 13. Come on, bro. You can't. This is the thing with lies. Someone could throw you a really good lie, but eventually over time, this person will forget, you know, to maintain the lie and it starts becoming inconsistent. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're a liar now. That's the same thing with Owen. His, his story is not adding up anymore. He keeps changing his lie. It's not consistent anymore. Another thing I want to talk about is also is his DNA test, right? He showed a screenshot of Ancestry DNA. And yes, it is Ancestry DNA because you can see the little leaf right there. And I have one myself, right? So I am a member. And so I could also look him up in the database. And here it is. He's not there. What a coinc what a, what a weird thing. Hmm. Anyways... So he says, this man says he's a, he's of Chichimeca descent. He says he's a Chichimeca descent. And then these regions where 40% of this individual's, you know, DNA 
does not come from a Chichimeca ancestral land, so he's not Chichimeca. Chichimecas are not from Texas and they're not from Chihuahua. So then, that's another lie. That doesn't align with the story. That doesn't add up. And also, your name will not pop up right there on the right corner like that. Here is my DNA results and see how my name doesn't, you know, pop up. Right, so, which brings us to our next point. And my granduncle, the last traditional language-speaking matriarch and patriarch of my matrilineal Pinanteja and Colteoteja clans, whom during my three years living with them, attempted to raise me traditionally, teaching me the whole of our clan's traditional oral history, songs, traditions, customs, dances, our clan's traditional silver work and copper work, our clan's traditional bow and arrow making, traditional hunting, trapping, and food preservation, and the whole of the Chichimechayot, the original instructions which allowed us to live in our beloved Siwach Titlan, our homeland, in a good way, as well as attempting to teach me all three of our clan's dialects, including an Udo Aztec and Southern Numic dialect of Numotehuapo from her patrilineal lines, and the Penanteja dialect I speak fluently today, which is closely related to the oldest dialects of Nahuatlatoli, which are guttural and termed classical Nahuatlatoli, which was brought to Mexico from the Four Corners region of the Southwest into Mexico and now considered a dead language as it was very different than the many variants of non-guttural modern Nahuatlatoli. Well, according to the response video, he said he learned the language from his granduncle, right? And then he said, in the later live with uh, Professor Pendejo uh, that he learned the language from his grandmother. Between the ages of 11 and 14, being raised by my great grandmother, uh, traditionally, she's the one who taught me my language, uh, my culture, um, our traditions. There we go again. The lie is starting to come apart, man. You can't maintain the lie enough, bro. The consistency. And then when he says that, right, which brings us to the next thing, right? This man right here, that's constantly being depicted in two screenshots and two photos, right? This man is named Chanupa. He is of Lakota descent and he also claims to have some Mexican ancestry. My name is uh, Chanupa Gohan Lee. And I'm with the Strong Hot Warrior Society of South Dakota. Okay, Larry. I'm going to squash you. I'm the Strong Hot Warrior Society. I'm going to shade my brother in this country. If you look up Chanupa, you can, he's associated and he's the head leader of the Strong Hearted Warrior Society. And somebody actually went ahead and gave him a call. And this is what they sent me. You tell them fuckers, give them my fucking number. They can call me, I'll talk to them. I'll speak these languages and then something to them. And let's see if they can answer it. You caught it right off that. You're the 13th person that did it. You caught my Nahuatl language. Right on, brother. I respect you and honor you for that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Would you say that, that uh, you taught um, uh, Quasho, you taught him uh, Nahuatl? Yep, I taught him Nahuatl. Right on, right on, brother. Yeah, I never let him know where he started. Pobis, and that's what we know him by, Pobis. He came to us. He came to us for help, him and his girlfriend. And his girlfriend, his name was Tiffany, and she had a couple of little ones. And these little ones were taken from her previous marriage to this, I think he might have been a Hasapa guy. Or what we, what we, what the Spaniards call him, um, you know, a Mayate guy. That's what we're, we're, we were fighting for his, his stepkids, okay? I'm the guy that went and got them stepkids back to her. I'm the guy. Amazing. I went to that fucker's house, got them, put them in the car, and took them home. Amazing, brother. You know, and he came out with some of these bad fuckers that claim to be, you know, crips and all this shit, whatever gangs, they had guns. I walked in there by myself. Where's the little ones? They're all like, what are you doing here? I said, I came for these two little ones. Now I need to take them. You want to do something, you better do it now. And when they see me, this is no shit. 
the, the little ones ran to me. Like, I was their savior. And so when I picked the boy and little girl up, man, they cried. They want to go back to their mom. So I said, well, come on, you're going to go home. And they lived in Kansas at that time. They had a little house that he bought, him and uh, Tiffany. And he remodeled it, he worked on it. He did his own renovation to it. And finally, they finally sold it. And he told me they were going to move south down to Arizona country and live down there off the prairie and hunt rabbits and do all that good stuff. And he did, him and Tiffany. And then next thing you know, those black people had some kidnapped those kids back. And that was the last time I ever heard anything from Tiffany and Pobis. It was a hour-long video, so I'm not going to go ahead and share the whole thing, but I'm going to share you guys what he also said about MMIW. He referred to MMIW. So this grandma, you reached out to every fucking activist that you could think of from these women that claim to be part of the missing, murdered indigenous women and whoever them fucking bitches' names are, I don't care about them. I don't give a fuck if they're on the internet claiming this, claiming that. They're all full of shit. The person, this is, this is the triple OG if, you know, like this other pendejito was talking about, you know? So... This was Triple OG. This is the one who taught Owen and gave Owen the 411. Come on, man. This is the person that educated Owen Thomas Phillips. This is the one who was basically responsible for um, taking him in. Also, a associate of mine went ahead and actually messaged Owen Thomas is Phillips' mother. So this is what she had to say. You could pause to read it. So basically, you know, she refers to Owen as her son. And of course, she has photos of him at weddings and little family photos and stuff like that. And kind of the thing that kind of rubs me a little bit the wrong way is that Owen is just, you know, he was so quick to just dismiss everything. And he was very fast to just dismiss and say that no that's not my mom you know these individuals he didn't even say my mom or adopted mother he just said these individuals and it's obvious by the tone of the text you know as you can read you know she she seems like if there was uh, a big fight or argument between the two and that kind of like you know inspired some kind of like uh rebel behavior where he left the home and hasn't came back ever since and they don't know of his absence so he's been missing for a while if that was really his adopted mother, why didn't she say that, oh, I am his adopted mother, you know, I am worried about him. Lastly, I want to go ahead and talk about when he mentions him being the last, the traditionalist, where he mentioned something along the lines of a God complex, who he thinks he's the one that's valid to speak for our community, right? He thinks because he's the only one that lives this, you know, impoverished lifestyle, quote unquote, that's what he said, right? That he's the only one that should be speaking on these things, or should be speaking on, on behalf of our community. Just because you are living a semi-sustainable life, 
right, in the middle of, of New Mexico or, in the, or Arizona, that does not mean that you are indigenous, right? There are countless other survivalists who are Euro-American who have been living in much more harsher conditions or much more, you know, primitive style survivalist life. There is a man named Matt Graham and he has been living in huts that he built on his own for more than 20 years. There is another guy who goes on dual survival. He's been living in his, you know, home with recycled products in Arizona too. You're not the only one with these skills. The thing you're doing with your arrows, that's called pine pitch. This is no new concept. Everyone around the world has their own survival methods. What makes you so special? Charge my phone and laptop. My shelter that I sleep in is an 80 square foot camper. I traded for a... Yeah, definitely a very, very traditional thing that the Chichimecas used to use because we were nomads and this was a vehicle that we used to move around a lot because we were nomads. You could find these in archaeological sites all over Mexico and you could definitely find these in Chichimeca sites, definitely. I find made and had to completely rebuild uh, from the inside out to make livable. There's no refrigeration, there's no air conditioning, there's no running water, no toilets here. We've made false... So let's rewind just a tiny little bit. So he says there is no running water, but yet he has a humongous water tank right there. He also says that he only has this small little solar panels right here that could only charge his phone and his laptop. But yet, how did he find the power to get this electrical chainsaw that he cut his freaking leg with on accident? A.K.A. the Iron Jacket Killer. Another thing I want to point out is his little dance. Check this out. Remember when he posted this? Right about now. You see? See that? You see how he's like backing up that way? So, I hate to break it to you guys, but this is not a traditional teaching maker dance style. It's not. You want to know what it is? It's fancy dance. Grass dance. Yay! Look at that. You got my boy Northern Cree, Notorious Cree, over here making that same move. Iron Jacket is just freaking appropriating off of other people's culture just to seem more authentic. Remember when he was... Remember when Iron Jacket was dancing like a goofball? You know, that little chicken dance he had? And like with this on Sueño and other and other of his videos. Well, that's not his dance either. That's not Chichimeca. It's a grass dance. Check it out. See? The same the same movements, the same positions of his arms right behind his back. Bam. Bam. Look at that. One over the other, over the other, over the other. It's just a grass dance. It's not it's not a Chimeka thing, bro. Then he also says, at some point in time, Oh, I facilitate. I make my own clothes traditionally. Traditionally clothes. Traditionally clothes. I make myself handmade. Right? Take a look at this. These little patterns right here. You can legit buy this off of Etsy. And all you gotta look for is women wedding belt. So the homie is out here telling everybody that he's getting married. Right, this is, this is, you can't make this thing up, bro. It's the same freaking pattern. It's the same thing. And you will find a gang load more of these Slavic belts and other styles. These, these are not even, are, are indigenous to this uh, continent. This is true. And you have this twisted, flawed mindset where you think that only being a survivalist makes you indigenous. Sir, this is how I know you're not one of us because that is not what makes you indigenous, man. What makes you indigenous is more than that. Sure, practicing those, you know, those survivalist skills, you know, would come in as a critical, you know, point for decolonizing, but that's not a critical point for your identity, for being indigenous. That's not a critical role for us being indigenous. One of those is definitely having that ancestry. And also, there's also Euro-Americans who also speak Nahuatl, and who have translated 15th century codexes, right? And various other codexes, and more than just one, you know, professional 
who speaks Nahuatl, who is non-Mexican, do they have the right to speak for our culture? You see how flawed your little mindset is? That my, that my friend is called gaslighting. You are gaslighting a whole community because they are affected by colonization. So the whole dramat, the whole the dramatization and what you're talking about, how being, how these people slandering you are being bigoted and this and that. You're you're the bigot, my friend. You're the one that's being fucking racist, xenophobic. You're the one that's that's being a fucking hypocrite right now, dude. You're just mad. You want to pull out every single card in your in, in your disposal right now to try to cover your ass. It makes you look desperate, bro. You should have just left and never have came back and you know what i'm disgusted by the most is that there are still some people that actually think that he's justified some people like this pendejito right here talking about how oh they just caught him being a pimp and this other pendejito saying oh my god you know those that ain't nothing that's just politics i don't worry about that you know don't worry about that that's just politics i ignore that if you are defending this man, and if you are not seeing the problematic behavior that this man has and not even being part of being part of us, you are either a rapist yourself or you are a rapist sympathizer. Do you realize how hard it is to tell somebody, especially publicly, that you have been sexually taken advantage of? So far I have I've been I've presented pretty factual and concrete evidence compared to Owen Thomas, where he has consistent lies and is proven to be a pathological liar. Now, for those of you who are encouraging his behavior, I really encourage you to stop doing that. Why? Because I think that this man, Owen Thomas, is mentally not all there, dude. And I encourage anybody to really seek out some help for this person. And what makes me think that, I'm no psychologist. I'm no therapist. But these are the things that I am noticing. One of them is that he has a God complex where he states, you know, he's the valid person to speak on this and everybody else should just sit the fuck down. He also states that his penis can heal women, which is a screenshot of him saying that right there, being caught red-handed. He dismisses everything. He dismisses everything. He never even humbles himself to even try to even, you know, address anything or take accountability. He's preaching and defending things that aren't even real, and he is a constant pathological liar. So, and then of course the last like 10 minutes of the video is just him, you know, posting screenshots of trying to make, you know, a few of the women look thirsty, you know, desperate, which is just childish, dude. Grow the fuck up. You never were grown into an indigenous lifestyle. You know, you were never taught any indigenous values. You're really just a white man from Florida who ran away because you have mommy and daddy issues, dude.